Hi, I wanted to show you how to make this beautiful silk scarf and print it with fall leaves. I've got a couple here, just a Japanese maple and an oak, and um, you can use almost any leaf you would like as long as it is fresh and flexible and strong, like these are. So here's one scarf that I've recently made using nice warm colors. And then I've got another one here using some beautiful turquoise and green and a deeper blue. And then the one that we're going to make today is kind of these jewel tones and um, we're working with 100% Hibodi silk scarves and these scarves you can get from Dharma D-H-A-R-M-A trading company and that's an online company and they have all shapes and sizes and qual different qualities of silk. But the silk that we're going to be using today is, it's called Habodi. It's 11 inches by 60 inches. And I believe that size is before the edges are, are um, hemmed because they're a little bit smaller than that. But these this is our 100% uh, silk scarves from Dharma Trading. And then the first thing you want to do is to wash your scarf once you get it. And the scar this is the special uh, textile detergent that they suggest you use. And that gets any oils or debris left from the silk making um, like with the silkworms, get any of that debris off of the scarves. For those of you who are doing this in the workshop, I will have this washed and ironed for you. So you'll be ready to print right at the workshop. Some, um, I've covered my table here with uh, plastic so that to protect my, my table. But also, you can see how translucent these scarves are because you can see that printing right through the, um, the scarves. So these are very nice, soft scarves. And uh, so now, once we get it washed and ironed, we'll be ready to start printing. So before we start printing our scarf, we have to choose what colors we're going to use. And here are the color choices you have to work from. And if you just play around with these colors, putting any old colors together, um, actually they're all can be very pleasing uh, groups of colors, you know, from warms, choosing warm colors. But it gets more exciting if you throw something else in there. So it's not just the warm colors, the golds, or let's try over here. You could put that together and that, maybe put in black. It's a nice combination. Or you could do cools with the purple. Throw in black, that looks good. The deep blue, or how about, this is, that's a little punch to it. So there's so many different combinations that you can use of colors. So get to put together the colors that you want to use. And today I'm going to be using um, this violet and this color eggplant. And I'm going to put this magenta and maybe some black. So these are gonna be what I think I'm going to use today. And I'll tell you why, because I have a coat that's this color. 
So um, I think I'm going to uh, try and make a combination that will go with my coat. The next thing you want to think about is getting some leaves. And you're going to need leaves that are nice and fresh, absolutely fresh and leathery. And uh, you can just see the size. This would be a good size to print on the scarf. Um, so get lar mostly large, this type of large. This is about six inches long and in different shapes. So here's a nice shape. That's a geranium. It's a very nice shape. This is a hydrangea and the beach. And that's a heuchera. I'm not sure how this will work. Although it's fresh, um, it's very, feels not real leathery, but it might work. The maple leaves all work out very nicely. And it's nice to have a variety of sizes um, because when you choose to put your leaves on, you want to use one leaf for one color. So if you have three colors, you're gonna need three leaves. So this is a nice contrast. Um, this is a nice contrast to these two and maybe I'd put this with it. So the leaves would contrast nicely with each other. Once you've chosen the leaves that you're going to use, these are my choices here, and I'm gonna start with my largest one, and you've chosen the colors. These are the colors I'm going to use. Then it's time to print your leaf. And we're going to need you're going to have pieces of parchment paper, two pieces, have these here. Um, you should have a nice paper towel sitting here and a old wet washcloth that you can um, occasionally just wipe your hands off on. And what we're going to do is try and paint with as little mess as possible. So I'm going to put piece of parchment here and I'm going to lay my leaf upside down. And this is the color. It's relative, it's a relatively thin paint. And I'm going to use a little sponge as my, like my paintbrush to apply the paint with. And this is a little rough edge up here. That's going to be our handle and the sponge is at the bottom. So I'm just going to take a little bit of paint so just a little bit, don't soak your brush, your sponge here. And then I'm just going to rub across my leaf, hold it still. I'm holding it by the stem. And once it's covered, just put this back in place. I'm going to lay it randomly, sort of randomly, onto my scarf and then press down. And I'm going to use a pretty good amount of force here. And I'm gonna go over this several times. Now, I'm gonna hold it in place for a second and I'm gonna look underneath and see if the paint came through. And that's what I want it to do. So it did go through, so I can pick it up and print again. So here, there's my first print. Isn't it pretty? And so I'm going to do another. Now I paint, this is the top of the leaf and I'm painting on the back side of the leaf. So I'm going to paint another one and this one I'm just going to kind of lay in a random, sort of a random and space, give a pretty good amount of space Okay, now here's the paper that I put on top to rub. I'm just gonna go over that with my paper towel to make sure there's no paint that's going to um, get onto the uh, scarf where I don't want it. And I'm holding this down with one hand, the leaf and the paper so it doesn't move. And then I can slide my hand over it 
and get a really good print. You never want to just let go there and let it, because if you're not holding it down, securing it, it's just going to move. So here's a second one. And I'm going to lay this back down right where I laid it before. Try not to lay it on top of the paint. And this is going to just keep the whole process nice and neat. Turn it another little different direction. Maybe I'll lay it in the center. Wipe this off. Wipe my fingers if I've got any paint on it and print again. The, the heel of your hand is a nice wide space to use to print your leaf. And then pick it up, lay it back in the space there and continue. Now I'm not I'm putting very little paint on my sponge. If you put too much paint on, it's um, it's not necessary. It's just not necessary, and um, it will not give you as pleasing a print as a smaller amount. And this paint. Um, you, want, you don't want it to be real thick on your scarf. You want it to be as thin as possible. So this, the scarf stays very nice and soft. So I'm going to go down and continue to put leaves on here. And every time, kind of turn it a different direction. And I'm leaving a pretty good space between each one of these leaves and that way there'll be room for my other leaves and for the other colors. Okay so I've gotten about halfway on my scarf and this is as far as um, it is on my table and what I'm going to do is pick up my scarf here. The other half was kind of hanging down. And in case some of the paint went through, I'm just going to wipe it off with the paper towel like this. And now I'm going to put the other half. I just kind of spun it around. I'm going to put the paint the other half with this oak leaf. Try to lay it right where it was. on the negative area, on the white space, so I don't get a lot of paint on the top of the leaf. That way it um, keeps the mess down. And then I'm just gonna come from this way, lay it down, wipe off this paper, and print. And I'm holding it with this hand. We want to make a press for, I don't know, 10, 15 seconds. And two reasons is that so it makes a nice print and so that there's enough time for it to bleed through to the other side of the silk scarf. get a process going so you just helps you to stay as neat as possible. So on this first printing, I'm going to stop and wipe before I 
get any excess paint on here that I don't want. A good thing might be to stop right here and to take it over to the hair dryer and just give it a little shot with the hair dryer. And I'm gonna do that right now. All right, so I dried it. It doesn't take long, just enough to set it, set the paint so it doesn't smear. Let's see, what do I wanna use? It's so pretty. Okay, so now I'm going to use the eggplant color and I think I'm going to use the heuchera and kind of go in between. I might overlap a little bit here and there and I'm gonna go through the same process. So I have another piece. I'll use this old presser piece right here to lay my heuchera on and my sponge. Just a little bit, you don't want a ton of paint on there. And this is a little more difficult with this uh, to get the paint on because there's a lot of um, waviness to this leaf. So I think I'll put it right here. Secure it, hold it with, I'm holding it with, in place with those fingers and then pressing it with the other hand and then you can switch. So you want to get a good impression. And I haven't used a heuchera leaf yet, so I'm kind of excited to see what it's going to look like. Ooh, there you go. Look at all that. That's very pretty. So I'm going to lay it back down and let's do it again. So I can see I'm getting my fingers dirty. This is a good time to get out that old washcloth. And if I get my paint on the tips of my fingers, just wipe it off now. So this leaf has, has a very rough surface and um, it's well worth taking your time to make sure you get all the edges. But um, it really gives a beautiful print. Now, there's, you know, there's really no right and wrong about where you put these, lay them. You just kind of want to evenly distribute the color so that it's you know, you've got a little bit of it all the way along, evenly dispersed, and then um, a balanced, the color stays balanced. And then also leave room for your other colors. So now I'm going to dry this with the hair dryer. Okay, so these are the colors that I chose to use. And so I have the eggplant and the light violet. And I'm thinking about what am I gonna do next and what leaf am I going to do next? I don't know, I'm gonna change my mind. I think I'm going to use this deep, deep turquoise here. And then maybe black, but I think I'm going to use this on this um, Japanese maple. Okay, so give your fingertips a little clean. And um, 
this all will wash right off of your hands. I might have a little paint caught in here, but I've tried it with rubber gloves and they just make such a mess um, that you just can't use your fingers with as much dexterity as you can um, in rubber gloves as you can with just bare hands. So this will wash right off. So I love the shape of a Japanese maple. And again, I'm holding it by the, the stem of the leaf. I've got a nice amount on there and kind of put it in the open space. I got a nice clean piece of paper, rubbing paper. Make sure I get all those points. I don't want to miss any of the points. Gonna lift this up, wipe the table off. Okay, so time to pick this up, wipe off the table. Get any wet paint off of there, and then I'm going to dry this with the hair dryer. And that doesn't take long at all to dry it. So I'm gonna flip it over on the opposite side. Sometimes it is hard to tell which is the opposite side. But I think this is. But we just wanna get even color on both sides, but it does go be be through beautifully. All right, now I, want to decide is this enough am i happy with this or do i want to add just a little bit of something else maybe a little bit of red popped it in that would be cheery a little bit of black that would be dramatic hmm and which leaf i think i might go for a little bit of cheery make it a little cheery and I want a small leaf. So here's another kind of Japanese maple I have that would be unique and um, opposite of what I have. I have this, it's not as easy to print because it's very thin, but it's lacy, it might be fun. So I'm gonna give this a try get a nice clean sponge and clean pressing paper and just a little bit of paint just go to the edge and get a little bit of paint put it here press it so you have an even amount on the bottom of the sponge and this i think is going to be a little more difficult because it's very delicate It might be too complicated. I might end up taking off a couple of these leaves, and you definitely can. Okay. So let's see. And I think of this as like the accent color. And I like doing it with the most um, the leaf with the most detail. Ooh, ooh, good choice. I like it.
Okay, so now's the time to pick it up. Wipe off the table and dry it. And so it's hard to show you the whole scarf all at once, but I'm pretty pleased with the distribution of the color and the shapes and the leaves. So now the next thing I'm going to do is just let this sit and make sure it's really dry. I'll dry it overnight. So here's my scarf. And I just want to show, try and show you a close up of all the detail from the underside of the leaf that shows up. And also, um, how translucent it is and how pretty it comes out um, with just a slight application, that real thin application of the paint. It also stays nice and soft. This is very soft. If I put a thick, heavy application of paint on, it would be feel kind of crunchy and stiff. So now it's time to iron this. And when you, you need to iron it to set the paint so it becomes permanent. And you can scrub it and wash it if you have to. So what I'm going to do is I um, made a kind of improvised ironing board here with a beach towel and an old, this is a um, cotton dishcloth. And I'm going to put my scarf on top of it and another cotton dish towel under it. And that's just in case you don't want to ruin your, your iron and um, by gumming up the surface of it, just in case you have too much paint on there because it will kind of melt and gum up the iron. And uh, this is an ancient iron, but uh, it gets good and hot. I have it set on linen. And then I like to use an old fashioned spray bottle and work with a spray bottle. Get this good, wet, and hot so we create steam, a really good steam. And you want to iron this for about 30 seconds per section. And that will set the paint so it becomes permanent. Okay, once you're done ironing it, the next step is to wash this in case there's any residue left. So you're going to wash this in warm water. These scarves are very, very dur durable. You can even wash them right uh, in the washing machine with a load of laundry. Then after you wash it and you rinse it, you're going to um, do a treatment with this Millsoft NB. And everybody that's in the workshop, I'm going to give you some of this. And the directions are one teaspoon per gallon of water. And you're going to agitate this in the hottest water that you can get out of your tap for 10 minutes. So believe it or not, the hottest water on this for 10 minutes, agitate it in the mill soft, and then rinse it in warm water. So once you wash it and it dries, then you can iron it, right? You don't even need anything once that process is done um, to protect the scarf. And you can just iron it and it will be ready to wear. So I hope this video has given you a pretty good idea of the process 
that you'll be using to make your own scarf at our workshop. And I look forward to seeing you soon. Take care.